know, chipping doesn't have to be that hard. In these next three videos, I'm going to share with you some of the real secrets to making chipping easy. People have told me time and time again this has helped them tremendously on their short game, and I can't wait to share it with you. Let's go and get started. Ugh, that makes you so frustrated. You just want to snap all your clubs in two. Do you feel like when you get over that important chip shot, maybe late in the round, to win a hole, win a match, or just to play a really good round, put up a good score, you start to chunk them, you start to thin them, the hands get really tight, everything gets jittery and shaky and quick. When you really want to be smooth and confident over the ball, it just doesn't seem like that's possible. Well, there's actually some really common instruction, and if you follow this, it works really good, but only for a certain type of chip. I'm gonna talk about what type of chip that is, when you can use that type of shot, and how if you try to apply that same technique to all your chips and pitches, it can really destroy your confidence in your game. You get really handsy and you get really jittery over it when those shots matter the most. By the end of this video, if you follow these steps, you're gonna feel really confident over the ball. You're gonna know that you can step up to any chip shot and knock it close. Let's go and get started. All right, so what's this shot that only works sometimes and can really hurt your other shots? And that is what I call the putt chip. And that's where the idea is that we're gonna use our putting stroke to hit this chip shot. There's a variety of ways that we have to do this, but this actually works really well if we do this really close to the green. So if I'm only you know, 20 or 30 feet from this hole, it can be really easy just to put the ball up there and be pretty consistent with it. So how does this work exactly? Well, number one, you wanna take your putting stance. You wanna make this feel like a putting stroke. So as I set up this golf ball, I'm gonna take the, the width of my stance I would normally if I'm putting. The second piece here is that instead of having my normal grip and having the shaft kinda of on an angle here, I'm gonna raise this club up a little bit. So now the toe is down, the heel is a little bit up on the ground. And what this does is this takes this leading edge, or, this, or the, the flat part, the sole of the club, and it tilts it up this way. Now that's much less likely to grab in some of the grass. If only my toe is touching, it's gonna to kinda of brush through the grass. It's gonna have much less chance of getting stuck and digging, that kind of thing. So with those hands up, that helps it to glide through the turf a little bit easier. The third thing here, I wanna use a fairly low lofted club. So I'm not using a sand wedge, a pitching wedge, anything like that. I'm really using like a seven iron, eight iron, nine iron, somewhere around in there to get these little putt chips. And then finally, I'm really locking my legs. When you putt, one thing that all great putters have in common is they don't really move their lower body. So as I'm making this little chip putt, I'm not moving my knees at all. They stay perfectly still. You're locking in your hands and arms. You're kind of getting a little forward shaft lean and you can kind of imagine all this being locked in. And all I'm doing is I go back and forth. That stays locked in, I rock it back and forth and that's gonna be just like a putting stroke, only we're chipping off the green. Now that can be really handy. These are actually pretty easy shots. Um, it's not that tough when you're only 20 or 30 feet away, but there is some problems with this. So as you start to get a little farther from the green, you're not gonna be able to hit them as close doing this. And here's the reason why. When I putt, if you think about even a pretty long putt, maybe I take my putter back to here. That would be a pretty long putt as I'm coming back and through. That's about all I feel comfortable with keeping my knees still, keeping my body still, and still hitting this putt. Well, if I get rid of this seven iron, and maybe I need to hit it over something, or I need the ball to check up a little bit faster, all of a sudden I switch to my sand wedge or lob wedge, and I do this same technique, the ball just isn't gonna go very far. All right, so that bump and run shot, or that locked in putting stroke idea, works really good when I have to make a short stroke. So if I'm only taking it back a couple feet and taking it through a couple feet, like I would be with a putter, I can stay really still with my lower body. I can stay locked in with my upper body. I can take a seven iron, an eight iron, a hybrid, just get the ball bumping up there and it's really easy. But at some point we get far enough away from the green or we have trouble in the way. Imagine there's a bunker here in our way that we had to hit it over that bunker to where that little short bump and run, locked in putting stroke style just isn't gonna work. And if we try to have that same idea and have that locked in approach, that putting type approach, and we try to make that work when we're farther away, everything falls apart. So now if I'm farther away here and I have my sand wedge, let's imagine that there is a bunker or there is rough or something where I have to carry the ball on the green here. And now all of a sudden I'm trying to still keep my lower body still. I'm trying to lock everything up here at the top still. I just can't make that happen if I really use the technique the right way. The ball won't go far enough. So what you end up doing is you end up getting pretty jerky with the hands and wrists because you're trying to get more energy into it. And now all of a sudden we end up with this kind of mismatched, you know, jerky, 
jabby type stroke that can easily shoot it over the green or be well short of the green. All right, so now let's jump in on what the pros are doing to free things up. Now here, the main difference, one style, the putting style, everything's locked in, we're trying to control. This style, we're loosening everything up. So if you pay attention to my knees and what you'll see with all great chippers, they're gonna let these knees pivot. So I'm not trying to lock those in, I'm letting those flow as though I was gonna just toss the golf ball up on the green. So if I do this, watch my knees here first and then we'll get into the details. So here, I'm gonna let everything turn on through, let my body create momentum. And now I can easily just chip a ball up there. It's not very tough at all. I'm letting my body create the momentum. So with this one, and one of the reasons that this is so much better with your hands and arms, and you don't feel like you're jabby, is I'm letting my body rotate. My hips are rotating, my chest is rotating, and that's creating the momentum. If I just hold this club very softly in my hands, now all of a sudden it's creating momentum that's gonna hit the ball. If I try to lock that in, I have to create that speed with my hands and arms and things get a little crazy. So that's the first key there. In order to do that, I'm gonna set up with my heels almost touching. You'll see a lot of great chippers doing this. And I'm also gonna open my feet a little bit toward the target. That makes things easier for me to open up and pivot on through this shot. That's gonna allow me to use my body to create that momentum. I'm also, instead of gonna locking my wrist in and keeping that really tight and rigid with my hands higher, I'm gonna go ahead and just let my hands hang freely and let my wrist stay really soft as I'm doing this. So as I'm going back and through, you can see my knees pivot and everything else just kind of goes along for the ride. I get a little bit of wrist action, I get a little bit of wrist hinge, it's completely fine. I'm not trying to lock it in and guide it. I'm letting the momentum of my body create that speed, create that momentum. So you can see there, it's really easy to hit these clean when you let your body do the work. So those are the main keys there. When we're hitting the, the putt type shot, that's completely fine if you're really close to the green and you can make this stroke that just goes back to here and back to here. At some point, that's not gonna be a big enough stroke. Or at some point, we're not gonna be able to roll the ball across the ground because there's a bunker in the way or there's rough in the way and we're gonna have to make a bigger stroke. At that point, when you make that bigger stroke, instead of trying to lock things in, free things up. Ankles close together, feet open toward the target. My body creates the momentum and my wrists stay nice and loose. All right, guys, got a really cool video for you. This is gonna be those low super spin wedge shots. We can start these out about 40 yards, anything closer than that, and it's not gonna be able to get enough speed to get the spin, and we can go all the way back to about 70 or 80 yards. So here we're kind of on the front end of it. It's not gonna spin like crazy from this distance, but you'll definitely see it check up. And I got an awesome drill for you to really get the feeling to make the shot happen nice time after time. The first piece is we gotta get open with our body. So if I'm setting up here, you'll notice that as I come on through, my body is opening up, everything keeps on rotating through toward the target, and I get a nice, you know, clean, crisp sound on this. So that one came out really well. Probably could have been a little lower. You saw it try to check up on the green up there, but the big key there was I got my body opening up. Two things, <clears throat> excuse me, two reasons it's important. Number one, if my body opens up, I can keep all my momentum going through the shot. I'm not gonna decelerate and kind of cast at the, the ball. I'm gonna keep everything accelerating on through there and I can be very aggressive through this. It's gonna help me to get more speed. The more speed I get, the more spin and the more solid the shot's gonna be. The second piece is as I open up, now my forward shaft lean just comes naturally. The more my body opens, the more my shaft is gonna get forward. If I have my body closed, no way I can get forward shaft lean. I'm gonna get that kind of chicken wing. If you see yourself chicken winging a little bit, that's what's happening. The body's too closed and you're trying to push through with the arms. I gotta get the body to open up and that's gonna allow me to accelerate through there. So it's a combination of opening the body and having forward shaft lean with that good spin. Those three things kind of going together is what's gonna get these really clean shots. I've got an awesome cheat for you. So some, sometimes it's a little difficult for people to get this right away. I'm gonna give you a cheat where Let's go ahead and set up with a normal shot here. I'm gonna take my left foot and open it up about 45 degrees. Now I'm gonna match that with my right foot. So I'm basically just pointing my body here 45 degrees open. I'm gonna take my normal grip and then I'm gonna set back up to this golf ball. So what that does now is that forces me to open up my body. That's gonna force my hands to go forward and now it's gonna be a lot easier to hit this kind of low spinning shot. So you can see there, no problem at all to get that to go right to the flag. I'm gonna be very consistent with this. So I'd recommend going ahead and do 15 or 20 of these. A couple little feelings here. When I'm doing this, I'm feeling like I'm just gonna to toss a ball straight to the hole. So my body's opening up. I just feel like I'm tossing the ball right to the hole. 
you're not going to see a lot of face rotation on this club. So it's not opening and closing. It's pretty much staying toward the target the entire time. Another feeling here is if I'm setting up square, I'm almost feeling like I'm swinging this way, kind of 45 degrees out to the right. So I'm almost on a plane of glass going this way. The difference is as my body opens up now, now that's going to be square to the target. So I'm kind of swinging inside out. Oh, got that one just a hair heavy there, but I'm kind of swinging inside out, but it's because my body's opening up that makes it square. So once we get comfortable with that, now all we need to do is the same thing, just setting up with our normal stance. So I'm going to set up my feet pretty square this time. They're close together. My left foot's a little bit open, but not nearly as exaggerated as the last few. Now when I come through, I'm going to have that same sensation of my body's opening up in the forward shaft lean, and I'm going to hit a really nice, clean, crisp shot right at the target. If I do that, oh, almost made it, then I can get everything to keep on moving on through. So try that out. Do the cheat first. Get familiar with that. If you like that, you can just keep doing it. If you struggle, or, if, or after you get the hang of it and you feel good with that, try to set up more square, and then, man, it makes things really easy to happen. So best of luck, guys. Hit those low spinners from 40 to 70 yards. It's going to be a lot of fun. Chipping can be extremely easy. I mean, if we can take a ball and toss it up toward this hole and get it pretty close to the hole consistently, then you can chip pretty well. I mean, it's really just not that hard. The hard thing, or, or we can make it as hard as we want to, if we follow a few pieces of advice that I think can lock us up to get us to be really tight, we'll start chunking, we'll start thinning, we'll start guiding it, we'll start trying to use our hands way too much in the chipping stroke, and really it's not gonna be very consistent. So let's make chipping easy. I'm gonna give you the real secrets, the real keys, so that you feel like you can just get up and down all the time. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's make chipping easy. Now you notice if I ask you to toss this golf ball to the hole, what you would do is you'd naturally start to take a step, you'd open up, you'd let your arm kind of have this free flowing feel to it. You really wouldn't try to guide it. The last thing that you would do is kind of lock in all your angles, get everything perfectly straight, get your body to stop moving, only hinge from one angle, and then try to guide the ball up there. At least if you're gonna be any good, you wouldn't do that. If you try to do that, you'd probably end up, you know, throwing the golf ball 10 feet in front of you or hitting yourself in the, the shoulder with it or something like that. So whenever we try to control things, we actually lose control. When you look at something in a very natural, like a tossing motion, you're gonna be free flowing. Again, those legs are gonna move, your body's gonna move. You're not trying to guide it up there. Same thing happens when you're chipping. When I'm chipping, what I wanna do here is I wanna get my knees to move. I want my knees to rock back and forth. That's gonna allow me to feel like I have a free flowing motion here and I can really chip very easily. The last thing I wanna do is to lock my knees in, keep everything very still, lock my arms in, and I'm liable when I do this, if I set up to a golf ball and try to lock everything in and go back and through, I'm liable just to chunk it and not have any feel at all. My hands are tight. I feel very anxious over the top of the golf ball when I'm trying to limit all my rotation. So if you imagine your right knee and your left knee, I wanna have these pivot back and through, and that's gonna make it a little bit more natural, a little bit more like a tossing motion, and you give up a little bit of control of your body or you give up a little bit of trying to control your body and you actually gain a lot of control while you're doing this. So you'll notice as I do these, I'm gonna let my hips, or my, my knees, my hips, my arms, my shoulders, all that kind of be free flowing. And then you'll see that that's naturally gonna get that ball to pop right up there. I almost made that one, but you're not gonna feel like you, you try to tighten this up. So that's the very first key there. Keep those knees moving, let those rock back and forth. And that's gonna help you to have a lot more feel and touch when you're hitting these chip shots. Piece number two is probably one of the most common things I see people get wrong, and that's trying to figure out where you're gonna hit the ground. In order to be a great chipper, we're gonna to wanna to hit the ground and the ball roughly at the same time. Now, I could try to place the ball. A lot of times you'll hear people say, oh, put the ball way back in your stance. Well, that's gonna cause some problems. If I put the ball way back in my stance, now in order to hit this golf ball, I'm gonna to have to be hitting down into the ball. If I do that a little bit too much, now all of a sudden, I'm chopping down in the ground, very easy to chunk the golf ball. If I place the ball too far forward in my stance, well now it's gonna to be tough for me to really flight that down and get some forward shaft lean. Here's a great way to just make it as easy as possible. I want you to go to get set up to an imaginary golf ball here, close your eyes, and then swing back and forth 10, 15 times. So I'm gonna close my eyes here. I'm gonna start by not even hardly touching the ground at all, and then I'm gonna to get to where I'm brushing the ground consistently in the same spot. So I don't really don't know where I'm hitting the golf or hitting the ground at all right now, 
I'm just making my natural motion and seeing what's happened. Now, when I open my eyes and look down, I can see there's a divot there. If I take this golf ball and I put that just right where the divot starts or just in front of where the divot starts. So I can see the divot, very, the very first piece of grass that I'm roughing up is here and then my divot comes up there. I'm gonna place that just in front of the first piece of grass that I touched. That way when my club comes down and touches the grass, that's gonna be right where I'm hitting the golf ball. So here, I haven't moved my stance. I haven't done anything different. I've just let my natural swing take over. Instead of trying to force something into your swing, just close your eyes, make some swings, figure out where you're hitting the ground, and then put the ball there. And that's gonna make it really easy to make ball first contact every single time. Again, hit a pretty good chip shot there, made some good contact. I'm just using my natural stroke. When you, when you find out where that is, kind of notice where that is in relationship to your feet, and then go up to the next golf ball, pull it in, use the same placement in relationship to your feet, and then you're gonna go ahead, hit the next one, and you'll notice you're making a lot more ball first contact, a lot more clean contact when you do it this way. Now, last piece is I need to keep my eyes pretty centered to be able to hit this ball consistently. Now, what's happening is if my eyes stay centered, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit more weight on my left side. I'm gonna feel like my left hip is over my left ankle, my left shoulder is over my, my left ankle, my chest is a little forward, and now my eyes are just kind of on the inside of my left foot. Now, as I rotate back and through, I let those knees pivot, you'll notice how my eyes don't move around a lot. If I was to draw a line down from my eyes to the golf ball, I don't want that line to move. I don't want to go like this and come back and through. I don't want to lift up and see where the ball is going too early. That's going to make it really inconsistent when I'm hitting this golf ball. And the reason is my eyes are what's determining. You heard the, the, the idea of hand-to-eye coordination. If my eyes are really stable, I have them locked in on where I'm going to hit this golf ball. If my eyes start moving around, essentially what's happening is somebody's grabbing this golf ball and they're moving the golf ball around because I'm trying to figure out where I am in relationship to the golf ball. So I have to keep my eyes as stable as possible when I'm doing this. So imagine that I had a line coming up from the center of my left ankle. That's going to go through the center of my hip and, and into my, my shoulder, kind of inside of my shoulder. I'm going to let that rock back and through and stay stable on that line the entire way. I don't want that line to be moving around a lot or I'm going to be inconsistent. Same thing with my eyes. I'm locked into the golf ball until I come through contact. I don't want my eyes moving around a lot. I'm going to pivot back and through. But my eyes aren't going to move. That's the only part that you want to keep stable. The rest of it is free flowing and natural. You notice I can move my body here back and forth, but my eyes are locked in. They're not really moving around very much. Same thing you want to happen in your, in your chipping stroke. That's going to make it a lot easier to make solid contact. Now, we don't want to stop here. In this video, we talked about the basics of getting some rhythm and getting some consistent contact, but we want to build on that and become a chipping master. That way, we can just set up to a golf ball, chip it, and know it's going to get close to the hole. I've got a great bonus video to help build on what we talked about here today to help you master that chipping. All you need to do is click the card that pops up on your screen or the link down below in the description. You're going to be able to make that crisp, clean contact, contact with the golf ball day in and day out. Let's go ahead and get started. Pitch shot could be anywhere from right by the green all the way back to probably 50 or 60 yards or so. And that's what you're gonna to wanna to do uh, when you wanna get a little bit more spin and get the ball a little bit more up in the air. We're gonna go ahead and let the wrist set a little bit more, have a little bit more club action, get the ball to go a little higher in the air with a little bit more spin. So let me go ahead and describe what is a good pitch shot so that you know what you're really going for. I think we gotta start from there, start from contact. So. As I make contact, I want to be coming in very shallow to the ground. So I don't want to be taking much of a divot. I don't want to be hitting down into the ground. As the club releases and we have a flat spot where the club travels very level with the ground for five or six inches on these pitch shots. So when that happens, let me go ahead and exaggerate. As my hand is coming down, my hands are close to the ground. As this club gets closer and closer to the ground, my hands move up. As the club moves down, now you're seeing them having this flat spot.